know me, I was the guy who did the movie presentation yesterday. Um, okay, so I want to talk about today uh, about dairy, number one, and also uh, about actually what we see as the future, what our future research agenda will, will be. Um, so we had over the last couple of months uh, to put in, uh, to think about uh, where we see our future going and uh, had to put in uh, actually a large scale proposal where we actually put this also in writing and uh, condensed our thoughts into something um, much more, in fact, tangible. But let me give you a short introduction about what dairy is. And uh, we have a specific mission and, and vision that which is to exploit semantics for people, organizations, and systems to collaborate and integrate on a global scale. And uh, our uh, vision is to be among the leading international web science institutes. And I think uh, I'm proud to say that as we have achieved this in the last couple of years, um, we are number one in our core space, I would say, in terms of publication areas. Um, we have outgrown the in initial academic uh, mission quite considerably by adding additional co by adding commercialization initiatives, uh, working with companies. Right now, we run about 20 different EU projects uh, in, in parallel and engage with, in fact, major multinationals, uh, not only within Ireland, but also in international. Um, yeah, we participate in about 17 different sanitization groups, typically in W3C and, and OASIS, um, and from size-wise, about 140 people and, uh, we, who are working in, in dairy. Um, this is something that you probably know. It's still maybe worthwhile to look at it just uh, as an idea what it is that we are actually aiming at. Uh, when you look in, in Ireland and for Ireland, you find a lot of different information, like, like for example, Wikipedia, um, like uh, CIA World Factbook, the Irish Independence or newspapers, some travel websites, um, Irish Rugby, if you want to go into, into what really uh, is important here in Ireland. Uh, the Irish government, the European Union has something to say about Ireland, increasingly more so. And of course, very important, the Irish tax man. Uh, altogether about 265 million websites who say something about Ireland. But if you really want to know and understand what Ireland is about, you have to go through all of these and manually, ma manually read it uh, all by yourself and put the mental image, the picture of what Ireland is together in your head. Which is of course what, what we are really talking about. Uh, namely, bringing information together from different stovepipes. Uh, ultimately, creating what we call a network of knowledge, which is universal, uh, interconnected, all encompassing, and assists the human organization and systems with problem solving. So, creating this network of knowledge ultimately then defines also uh, the research agenda of, of dairy. Uh, in interconnected, universal, all encompassing is linked data. Uh, human, it says human organizational problem solving is in fact then how to deploy this, how to make sense out of it and enabling innovation and increased productivity points exactly into pushing it into domains like for example the life sciences, what we have seen uh, uh, this morning uh, or in other domains as well like for example digital archives, uh, the cultural, uh, cultural heritage uh, domain, in fact many others that are relevant for, for society. Uh, in terms of what, dairy, what dri is driving dairy is the research excellence, uh, which drives the industry collaboration, open source prototypes, so uh, work that we have done is represented in Drupal or in, sem in semantic desktops, uh, drives uh, hundreds of thousands of different websites. Um, Void and DCAT um, are examples of uh, standards which we contribute, but Sparkle would be another one. Um, Atom, Pepper, Ivia, this is aim things that we are pushing into commercialization. And finally, then uh, spin outs, like for example, Synergy or Civil, uh, which are all driven by the research agenda. Um, in terms of how we see the future and how dairy is going to look like, this is right now, uh, in fact, a, a picture in transition where we see several research groups. Um, emerging uh, in, with, within dairy. The lower part of the house is what we call the core research, consistent of uh, several different uh, research groups in dairy. With 130 people, you have quite some um, possible impact and, and, and capability to, to have uh, research groups. And the focus on linked data, semantic web, network knowledge, 
is in, is in fact uh, helping into formulating a quite coherent message. The lower part is the core research. On top of that, we have what we call application-oriented research domain, things like healthcare, life sciences, cybersecurity, um, and uh, green sustainable IT and e-governments. On top of that, then, uh, an area or uh, groups which in help with commercialization, injecting directly um, technologies into, into companies, into, into the industry, or engage with industry also in the more, um, more development fashion. So we can also have contracts which, in fact, uh, do more development and have a bit less of, of, of research, while still being able to tap into the research excellence that exists in the lower part of the house. Um, our mission in the last part, couple of, uh, well, years had been enabling network knowledge. And uh, this has been quite useful in, in the past. But uh, I think many of you know this picture. It's something that, in fact, emerges within Derry and the Technical University of, of, of Berlin and has been published and has been used as a symbol. I think, by the way, that it, this is in no means a real representation of the linked data um, assets that really exist. It's rather a symbol which symbolizes uh, in some kind of arbitrary matter what really is being happening. And as, as a catalyst, it's quite, quite important. The nice thing is that this cloud exists, these data sets exist, they are growing. Um, and I would argue that, that the enabling network knowledge part of which we can actually be quite proud of as a community actually has been done. This is done yet. And if you think about what the future is, I think it's not yet, it's not enabling it anymore. The semantic web as, as a concept is in the head of people. The, the underlying data assets are growing, and it's no longer anymore about uh, enabling it. It's much more, at this point, about exploiting, making sense out of it. So taking the semantics part a bit more serious. What we have now is a heap of data, which is, well, all in the same format, or a very similar format, which is, to some extent, interconnected, but also has lots of different errors, has issues, has problems, and need, is, it needs a lot of different tooling and abilities to actually handle, handle it. And that's something where we, right now, suck. I mean, we, where we don't have the capabilities to really make sense out, out of it. And I think Lee Holland this morning highlighted a couple of, of those issues and problems. He said that a couple of years ago it wouldn't be possible. Now they're starting to tackling it. But it is far from being solved, from being done. Um, but this is not only in the semantic web space. The nice thing is that the amount of data, in fact, is growing. So this is a graph, I think, from a, from a recent IDC study, which many of you may have seen, that data is to predicted to be grown, I think, 44 times until 2020, uh, which is an arbitrary number to some extent. But at least I think that the, the trend is quite clear. The amount of data is growing, and the pressure to actually exploit it in some commercial sense is growing as well. It's growing, in fact, even faster than, than the amount of data uh, is, is, is growing. Um, so how to exploit this this, this big data. And then you, you discover, in fact, the same challenges which were discussed this morning or throughout this week, that you have to uh, manage this information. You have to do abstraction, reasoning, analytics, and visualization, interaction, collaboration, domain knowledge, and ultimately, and this is where, where we are coming in, the integration into a coherent framework. What this linked data standard is enabling to do is to make our own methods and tools interoperable, create a framework around it which leads to the creation of a data pipeline, which enables all of us, in fact, contribute to this pipeline and make the different toolings and tools and methods interoperable. I don't think anybody of us here has the holy grail and can, can reasonably claim that whatever he does is, is, is solving all the problems. Ultimately, what the semantic web does is enabling us 
is giving us a playground of which we can try out our own different methods and incrementally improve it, but it only makes sense if it becomes part of an overall architecture, of an overall infrastructure in there. And what we see, and this is ultimately determining the, the research agenda which uh, uh, will drive us for the next couple of years, is the creation of what we call a knowledge dashboard or knowledge pipeline, which um, talks about quite trivially from the core tasks like network uh, data management uh, up to how to clean it up, how to process it, how to analyze it, abstraction, reasoning, analytics, and then visualization, collaboration, and, and, and exploitation. Um, the difference, of course, between, and, and you will recognize these components, this is nothing new, this is what all of us are in fact doing, but each of us is doing it, it individually, disconnected, not necessarily in integrated. The effort then brings is in, in bringing all the different tools, all the different technologies together, making it work in a, in, in a combined framework. And that's, that is where, our, where, where we at this point have a gap which needs to be filled. And what I th believe is, it will, is going to happen is that we again as a community have to come together and have to give us this, this framework, have to define a way how we make all the different techniques and tools interoperable that, that we can create this pipeline where we can plug in analytics algorithms into the data management architecture, do the reasoning that, that, is, that, that is necessary, exploit configurable visualization techniques. Part of it has already been done, if you know the, the um, simile, um, the, uh, Smile, the, the simile work from, from MIT, these are reusable visualization components. Still too cumbersome to use, still not generic enough, but I think it's pointing into the right direction. Many people are, are recognizing this already, that this is the way, but what we need is, is some effort which pulls this all together and generates this particular pipeline. Um, I talked about that we put in another proposal in, in, in yet, so this is ultimately this question, this pipeline, not just within dairy, but in fact more on a, on a global scale, is something that we are looking at in, in, in dairy. We have put in a large scale proposal, again, for I think altogether 60 million euro for the next six years, um, and focusing on, on a number of core demonstrators in, in here. Each of those demonstrators are, are with significant. Uh, support from companies, uh, like for example, connecting health and life sciences, so bench to bedside data aggregation, analytics, linking and analyzed data in there together with major pharmaceuticals, smart enterprise with companies like Cisco, Avaya and, and, and others analyzing the data and bringing the data within uh, an organization together to enable collaboration and archives and open data together with um, broadcasters, um, school book publishers and others uh, and, and um, government data agencies, again, creating this kind of pipeline in an interoperable, um, in, uh, interoperable fashion. Um, we are guilty as everyone. So I, I showed you a picture of, of, of dairy and how it exists. And we are probably as guilty as everyone that, that we have a lot of different tools which all form part of this infrastructure, but are not necessarily interconnected in any coherent way. Yes, they all work with linked data, but they don't form, are not, cannot be communicated as an as a integrated solution to an, to an actual problem. If you want to talk to, a, let's say, pharmaceutical or to, um, to, to a company like, like, like Cisco. I want to talk about a couple of those those solutions as much as time as times permit. So you may heard about neoliberalism. Uh, it's a tool that originated from, from Derry. It's been used by um, the US data.gov data portal, enables uh, a very interesting way to edit web, web lightweight way to, to edit web vocabularies and to share it and to make them com well to disseminate them and communicate their content to non-semantic web users, so to maybe developers which actually need to deploy this kind of, of data. 
Uh, Google Refine would be another piece of, of technology helping you to clean up RDF data. Uh, many of you may be aware of, of Synergy right now forming a, a startup together with a major publisher who is uh, committed to deploy the infrastructure uh, in, inside uh, in, for, for company purposes. Um, XSparkle would be another way to combine XML and RDF processing into a coherent framework. Coral uh, for enabling document search over a, a document collection and enabling <coughs> queries. Um, so expert finding using linked data. And you see already there's a lot of different tools available, roughly in tackling different domains, but not as integrated as we would like it, uh, as we would like it to, to be. Um, now, one of my the things that I like is, is community uh, analysis, and maybe I'll talk two minutes about, about that here. Um, so one, one, one aspect that Semantic Web enables us to do is the analysis of, of user communities. Um, you can measure, if you go to an online board, uh, things like persistence, in relation popularity, reciprocity, based on, on messages that people are exchanging with each other, like, for example, a, a bulletin board. And that gives you a, a chance to, to identify certain roles that people are having, making a community ultimately being observable. You can identify if somebody is, is, is quite popular or not too popular, or is initiator, or doesn't contribute much to, to a discussion. And you can quantify it based on a number of, uh, of, disc of uh, parameters that you can identify and then start, start to measure. Um, it turns out if you uh, do this and apply this for a number of, of, of Kernel communities, like for example, uh, the personal issues forum that exists here in Ireland in, in Boston.ie. It turns out that the personal issues forum consists uh, most of the time of uh, taciturns. Um, nobody really answers. And the rest is a couple of, uh, of um, grunts, so people who just issue something. So in other words, nobody is really interested in your personal issues anyway. There's not much communication going on. Maybe surprising or not, but it's interesting to see this rightly in the nice graphics that are being captured. Um, or a Christianity, where, where those, where those weather, um, people about uh, weather, um, understandable in Ireland, is, are grunts to a large, so people who just occasionally issue a grunt and then, um, and then uh, shut up. Uh, whereas in, in Christianity, there are some interest in discussion, supporters, uh, which in are in fact hap happening. Um, Windows uh, developments and politics also share some interesting insight. Interesting enough, the number of grants in, in, in all three of them is quite similar. I don't know what it says about Windows, but it's, um, or about politics. But uh, again, it's just a, a po very popular a very, very interesting picture that it now is now possible to look into online communities and identify the health status. So are people really uh, answering and, 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 or is this a healthy discussion or is this just a number of grants going on? Um, this is just one, again, example of, of analysis that has been happening, which, by the way, now took a lot of time to, to do this and to computers, but which I, I believe with the pipeline that we are aiming at uh, is something that we could do with the snap of, of a finger once the different techniques are all, in fact, integrated and, and be done and can be generated. Um, if we have two minutes more, I could do uh, another um, analysis, which I found also very interesting um, in terms of, one, once again? Yeah, sure. Um, so, which is actually the evolution of, of, of co observing the evolution of communities. And um, again, that is the semantic web, or the availability of data, in fact, uh, is enabling. And again, where we need an infrastructure supporting this kind of analysis. So, you may know of uh, the structure of scientific uh, 
Revolutions by Thomas Kuhn. It's a very, I think, popular book and, and showing us how scientific discussion is ultimately happening, that there is a pre-paradigm per period, um, that a paradigm evolves, normal science is, is being done, and then uh, there's a crisis, people are not satisfied, there are rebels emerging, rebel consortium from yesterday, uh, sometimes the reaction to this crisis and, uh, and uh, a reaction to this a paradigm shift. Um, what the data that has now been available uh, is enabling us to do is to observing this kind of, of behavior and to, to observe um, the transitions that, that are ultimately uh, happening. And just to give you an example, this which looks like a uh, London Underground map is in, in fact different uh, online communities in the semantic web space who are working on specific topics. Uh, this has been determined by, I think, cross by um, co-citation co co networks for people who are publishing together and determining the, the key topics that they're publishing about. And we can see that these communities have different topics. We, have, for example, have here one group which, or one community which uh, has, uh, talking, is talking about ontologies and uh, semantic web services in combination. There's another one which talks about information uh, queries and retrieval and, and search. Um, and those actually merge together, form a new community in the, the community sex 36, talking about a, a combination of those uh, two topics. And we see semantic web services being coming up and becoming a, a, a major topic in there. And, but this evolution continues, so people are, again, combining those efforts, so ontology, semantic web services, and then moving more into the business, in, into the business realm. Oops. That into the business realm. Uh, uh, um, again, this is just one other example of, of an analytics task, covered far too short, too, too, uh, too short. but what I wanted to highlight was just that these are analytics tasks which are, are interesting, which are all specific, uh, and there are hundreds or thousands of them, and what we need is something like this dashboard, which it enables to plug this in into a coherent framework, into the pharmaceutical space, into the publisher space, into whatever domain there is, so that we can finally uh, make sense out of all the information that we now have ac access to. So I have a kind of, I guess it's a philosophical question around... <coughs> it's, a, it's a philosophical talk. <laughs> the, uh, also, I guess, a general view from Derry's perspective. So we were just talking earlier about... Um, I went to um, a semantic technology conference a little while ago, and it kind of echoed what you said about the battle being won to kind of, you know, promote semantic technology. It was interesting that there, that every talk was actually more focused on text mining and mapping of unstructured data to concepts than actually the problem of joining the concepts of, you know, this kind of thing. So it seems to me that, I, I don't know, what's your view, is that almost are we getting a bottleneck now in the semantic stuff? Because we have technology, we've got ideas, as you say, you know, these are maturing rapidly, but actually mapping the, the massive unstructured data to tech, to actual concepts, is, you know, it seems to be where everybody is, is doing all the work. And is this something that Dari is focusing on, and how do you think this field should be joined up? I, I think what, what you are saying, or was asking, is, about the field of uh, area of, of entity re resolution, identify you have common URIs, which is nice because we now have a joint framework, a joint format, so we don't have to worry about any more of the different words. But now, of course, the task is to joining the dots and, and identifying the and, and applying the the the, uh, the concept of resolution. Do ultimately. Uh, what DBPedia was trying to do by placing themselves firmly in the middle and forcing everybody to link to themselves, which is, I think, the purpose of the linked open data ground. Um, so one approach, obviously, is how DBPedia is doing this for a variety of different domains. DBPedia is not able to do it or pro provide more, more, um, more automated, more auto automated means. Um, the trouble is again the sharing. Um, so. 
my own, this is a philosophical answer to a philosophical question. Um, number one, yes, of course, there are automated means. I mean, the database literature is, is full of entity resolution algorithms, and I think we have barely seen the, the top of it. But I firmly believe there's a piece of internet infrastructure missing in there, which is some sort of URI registry, which we are able to, to look towards. To. How this exactly looks like, I don't know. Probably similar to, maybe similar to what the DNS is, is right now. Um, we need somebody, something that is able to establish that. Either a company, not profit, not profit or organization, whatever it is. Occam tried to do this to some extent. I, I have to look into the details why this is not taking off in the, in the amount how it, how it should be. Maybe it's too complicated. I, I don't know yet. Uh, but that's, that's where I believe we have to go. So if we want to make steps towards this very ambitious agenda, I think we need to uh, be broader than just, our, than just this community, obviously. But we need to be very broad. So, so we need to include database people, but also maybe even no, social science people. Not, not this evolution of communities is a social science problem. Uh, sure. They, sure, we can draw the diagrams, but they know how to read them. Uh, we need the natural language people, uh, people from the application domain. You cannot meaningfully do this integration of, of a, a bed to you know, bench to bedside data without talking to people from this planet. So that, how do you see that as an institutional challenge, both for your institute and also as a community, to on the one hand be inclusive enough that we get all this stuff, and on the other hand not to become so to spread ourselves too thin. Um, I did this uh, um, analysis was done without any social scientists, etc. Et and I don't think they have, they have, of course, the no network analytics, um, social network analytics frameworks. Uh, but this is goes, I think, beyond. But the presenter goes beyond this. Um, so as, as such, this is just a application of some mathematical al algorithms trying to figure out uh, parts and and this can be tweaked uh, to, to particular need. When it comes to this particular infrastructure, this is nothing else than a piece of network or IT infrastructure similar to RDF, uh, HTML, the web. I don't think for that that we need social scientists. What we need is a nucleus, a core, somebody who, who, who takes a, sh a first shot, publishes it, at some point of time, the establishment of, for example, a W3C group, which talks about how to bind the different pieces together in the repeatable work, push it out into the world, and, and grow consensus uh, along this. Uh, I think it would be a fatal mistake to start to, to, to build this from the very, very beginning. That the analytics frameworks and, and, and techniques and, and technologies that are in a high speed fashion went, went through uh, in, in can be plugged in into this. Is done just a, a test of, of purpose for, for of fitness for, 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 for purpose. So they should be able to plug it in. But that's a, that's that's then an evolution step that needs to happen as as we gather feedback in, in evolving the infrastructure. So so in other words, short answer, no. I think we need a technical core. That's it. Try it, test it with, with some application domains. You're right. But push it out there. Gather, gather feedback and grow it uh, as as a standard. So uh, I think that your question goes in the direction is, will, th will there be a data market? And, and there have been a couple of startups, try to remember the names, which, which are not doing exactly very well at this point. Um, also, 
while I was hoping that, that Synergy would, would, would become an internet infrastructure, it, the application domain, the startup is focusing on an inter, intra company application, bringing the data together. I'm, it's, it's an interesting observation. Uh, my own, again, personal philosophical belief is I think th we haven't just figured out the right business uh, model yet for this open. But maybe, maybe this has to happen also inside an organization first before it really can go, can go outside. On the other hand, we see a lot of, of data aggregation efforts already. For example, in the cultural domain, you have efforts like Europeana, which are pulling data together for a variety of, of, of national archives. It's not necessarily now a business case, rather it's, it's some government funded, but uh, it's, 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 a good, it's a good starting point. Um, Maybe, maybe it's right now time to exploit this inside co co companies, maybe as a federation from, from companies, maybe not yet in the, in, in the, op in the open space. We have, I, I'm supervising a PhD at this point about um, data markets, trying to figure out what, what this is. The student has started about a week ago, so we don't know yet. <laughs> Uh, when it was at the last uh, ISWC conference, uh, they saw uh, people saw my National University of Economics, and they really, uh, said, told me, "What, what the heck, you are doing uh, this uh, kind of conferences?" They took me for an economist, uh, which, which I didn't see very really sound. Yeah. <coughs> uh, maybe. Oh. Probably no more questions to go out of time. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Stefan. Sure.